hear how Anne's family has built bridges between Egypt and Sweden. And I think all of us here are, you know, we have a common cause promoting peace, love, understanding. Uh, that is our mission. I think it's a life mission for all of us, for many of us here. Next, Charmin Ahmed in this beautiful turquoise uh, sari. And uh, she is founder president of the One Light Institute to promote peace through multidimensional education and experiential learning. She has a master's degree in women's studies and she was the first recipient of Women's Studies Scholar Award from George Washington University. She's also been featured in the Washington Post and uh, many international media. She's, um, we're going to hear about The Rainbow in a Heart, which is her first published bilingual publication in Bangla and English, based on a fiction to promote women's empowerment, universal motherhood, and peace building among children. And we're going to watch a film that's 45 minutes long, but I'll invite her to the podium to introduce the film. Sharmi. Thank you so much, our excellent moderator. You have really been part of all the, you know, gluing together everybody's speech in such a synopsis, beautiful. And I also uh, would like to begin with the universal greetings of Salam, Peace, Shalom, Shanti, and in every language, uh, which I will not be able to speak, but it is coming from my heart, peace, to you all and this has been really a conference of the heart I really feel this heart energy so much pulsating in this room in everybody I have met so far so it's a really a different kind of a conference and here I will be speaking a little bit about uh, the dance drama production based on my book called The Rainbow in a Heart now it, before I begin I don't want to, uh, lest I forget, and I shouldn't, that is that I would not be able to be here had it not been the cordial, kind invitation from Dr. Alia Rafia, Sharon Mihares, Nahid Anga, and the fabulous, wonderful, coordinated, uh, so heartfelt coordination by the Human Foundation, from the Library of uh, Bibliotheca Alexandria, and so many named and unnamed staff, those who are in the background, my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to you all. Now I go back to my the, this uh, rainbow in a heart theme. The name is the rainbow in a heart because um, it represents diversity of our thoughts, perspectives, religion, uh, culture, ethnicity, gender, everything. So like a rainbow, we are reflecting this diversity and in, just imagine it, if it's God's world, it were, were one color, one thought, it would have been so monotonous. And this diversity brings life to everything. It, 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 it's a foundation of creation. And like a rainbow, the rainbow holds all these colors together into an arch-like bridge. So it is like the one human heart touching another human heart with this multi-dynamic outlook and perspectives. And that's why, um, that's why we find, try to find God or our heart awakening through mystery, through beauty, through mysticism. And beauty, love, uh, integrity, these are all beautiful reflection of that oneness of God. So in uh, this um, story, which transforms into dance drama, there you'll see a mention of eternal light. And eternal light is, represents our higher consciousness. You can call eternal light as God. And in my story, I haven't really um, uh, identified God 
in the he she terminology because God is neither he nor she though God encompasses all these components of masculinity and femininity yet God is above all beyond comprehension that's why God is a mystery we forever in search of this um, divine one light through the art through music through reflection uh, through creativity through adventures even by doing so many mistakes in life, we try to come to the point when we find our true self. So, but then how to integrate kids um, in um, conveying this uh, massive or more complex understanding? Kids learn love music, art, uh, dance. Um, they, uh, these are transcendental words of wisdom that anybody can relate to. And when we um, uh, organized this uh, whole production. It was not our uh, our whole um, sort of um, idea was not just to look at the final production, but look at the process itself. Who are we involving? So what we did, we included the destitute kids, kids from a higher economic strata, lower middle class, so all came together. So this process itself is beautiful. Even you'll hear the children's voices, the songs. These are sung by some kids, you know. They couldn't afford a lunch, and but they felt so empowered by this inclusion. And we felt honored by their presence that these are the talented gems. And then, um, uh, the, our production has its first showing at the very prestigious, uh, uh, beautiful um, uh, theater called the F. Scott Fitzgerald Theater in Maryland. That's after a very renowned American literary figure, F. Scott Fitzgerald. That's actually final resting place and family home turned into a beautiful artsy theater, music, opera house. And that's where our first production was um, performed and then we took the production to Bangladesh and it was performed at the National Theatre of Bangladesh and each each show, we had two shows, uh, drew more than thousands of people, thousands of people and guess what, again, our main VIP guests, we sponsor hundreds of kids from the slum and the very impoverished areas of the town. We, you know, send them transport, the food, the beautiful goodie bags, and they sat by the ministers, they sat by the uh, luminary figures, because they are the VIP. So it is the process is inclusion of the kids from all, like lower socioeconomic strata, and they are also our VIP guests. And, you know, so try to break the class barrier. So this is the, um, the behind the background story. But then how this, um, did I envision a dance drama? I will not take a credit on that. Now that's a vision of another woman. Who, uh, her name is Rosemary Mitu Gonzalez. She comes from Bangladeshi Christian, Catholic Christian background. And I happen to uh, uh, have been emceeing at a charity um, event and I met her two very lovely children. They're frolicking around, very sweet kids. And before I even had known Mitu, who would be my future uh, socio-production uh, partner, I gifted my book, The Rainbow in a Heart, um, to the kids. Next day, I received an excited call from her, and Mitu said, I read your book through my kids. Can you write a script? Can you write two, three songs? I would like to um, transform it, choreograph it, make it into dance drama. And I said, I never wrote a script. And I, I did write, but never wrote a script for a dance drama. No, you know, music, or I mean, no songs, but I'll give it a try. So I did. So this is how one woman from a Catholic Christian background, one from Islamic 
Bengali background, both are Bengalis, but two faith tradition merge together on the same goal of bringing peace to dance, art, music, songs of the soul. Now, um, you, um, I'll not give much tips, you know, about the film itself, which will be uh, shown shortly, but you'll see a lot of um, sort of interplay between nature, animal, um, flower, the hurt of the trees, the joy of the plants, but these are all embedded in me, uh, have been embedded in me in my, since my early childhood, actually, particularly through my father. My father was a nature lover, and it was uh, during a tumultuous time in the history of Bangladesh, then East Pakistan, we won a landslide victory in the first ever held general election in Pakistan, and my father was the general secretary of the largest political party that won a sweeping victory. So they were all getting ready, okay, new parliament will be in session, they were drafting the constitution. In the midst of all, during that time, we had, a, you know, in that period, during that time, there was a massive cyclone, and you know, Bangladesh is a land of many rivers, and you know, we have an ocean on the side, and the, in the cyclone hit a lot of people, refugees, to shelter in our house. But here, I think, he implanted this uh, anecdote in my very nascent young heart that was um, that when all the people took shelter, you know, at her home, and my mom sent me to call my father for something, and I didn't find him. She said, go and you know, get your dad, and she needed to tell him something, and I didn't find my father. I was looking, looking, looking. Then guess what? I find him holding a dead bird outside in the veranda, and we're beautiful, you know, Bangladesh, you know, it's, we have a lot of flowers, lands, you know, a lot of greeneries, and we had a beautiful um, flowering hanging plants, and my father was holding a dead bird. It was probably a nightingale, bulbul, bulbul. Uh, we call it bulbul. It's a nightingale, and he's holding, and he was in tear, and and I just found him. It was not a stage, you know. He was a politician, not a stage tear, in front of thousands of public to, you know, evoke emotion. He just got caught in front of his little girl, and she, he just felt embarrassed. The whole day he didn't eat, he, he blamed himself for forgetting to shelter that bird inside. He said, I gave shelter to thousands, you know, hundreds of people at home. How could I have forgotten this bird? And I felt, so in my story you'll see that if you don't hear the songs of the bird, the thunderous sounds of the clouds, <laughs> the enormous blueness of the ocean that don't touch you, that beauty, then you're really devoid. When we talk about human rights, it's not the human rights. You have to listen to the, you know, songs of that, you know, little bird, the child, the roaring of the river, you know, all, we are all interconnected in the beautiful web of the universal rhythm and we are dancing together. So that was a message implanted by my father at that Mason stage. And guess what, again, in just shortly ever after, this is the same person, Tajuddin Ahmed, he led the war of liberation for Bangladesh to victory in 1971. So for me, I also saw liberty coming through this all interconnectedness. And true leader, my father, is not because he brought Bangladesh to victory, but because of his this subtlety, having the third, fourth, fifth, sixth eyes of looking at every intricacies of life and revering them as one's own. And then uh, comes my mother's role in 1975. The first tier of our uh, democratic movement took a big brunt and halt because the fundamentalists who don't represent the majority of the nation, and again the backed by the foreign powers, probably you can read the book, The Trial of Henry Kissinger by Christopher Hitchens, to have a, a more uh, on the genocide on Bangladesh and other countries. 
uh, first year of the political leadership he brought for the nation into victory uh, and liberty were killed, ruthlessly killed. And my mother took over the helms of the largest political party. She was a housewife. Um, all the dresses that I grew up wearing made by my mom and stitched by my mom. She, my mom was a fabulous cook. Uh, she was an avid gardener, social worker, she was a homemaker. But when the country needed the unity, she reorganized the largest political party and gave leadership. But when the party was stabilized, he did not hanker for power. He was not looking for a position. She stepped down back to her road. She said, that was the time I came and that was needed. And she's, very, she's an icon of uh, really a... Uh, uh, unconditional love and unity in the country today, but this is what I take from my mom. There's no, it's a beautiful blend of masculinity and femininity that yes, uh, to be in the political leadership, you don't have to be like a man. You can bring your human compassion and bring wonderful, beautiful stuff in the political public realm. So uh, the rainbow in a heart resonates that. And then, uh, I think all this developed into uh, my recent formation of my organization called the One Light Institute. And the One Light Institute, this comes from the same, the God, this eternal light. In the Buddhism, God is uh, revered as a Hindu. I mean, Buddhism doesn't speak God as God, but it's a higher consciousness, Nirvana. It's an illuminated, uh, 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 ever-glowing presence in every self. Uh, Hinduism. Uh, we say Brahma, but Brahma is representation of life, Sikhism, uh, Jainism. Uh, in Old Testament, it says, let there be light. And New Testament, it says, the city doesn't need to have light. God's own presence is the light. So all this culmination of the uh, wisdom coming from different faith tradition embedded in this one principle, God being one light. Um, I uh, named my um, organization the One Light Institute. Um, it has a, not only a spiritual wisdom, also it is interlinked with science. We know before 1920, whole world was tilted toward the Newtonian form of physics that matter evolves from matter. Um, cells come from cells. but. During the time of Einstein, Max Planck, Niels Bohr, and Young, you know, they all came together uh, that, yes, when you break down the matter and molecules, go to the subatomic levels, you break down the electron, proton, neutron, you find what? You find energy, you find light, the whole building block of the universe, the stars, the species, the plants, the birds, the tigers, everything human being, the child, everything is coming. The building block is that light. So if we are that one light, what separates us? That's ignorance. Our true self, where have we come from? Where are we going? Why are we here for? So this is a genre, the story of the rainbow in a heart that I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much.
Finally, Amrita found her perfect mother who was created by a child's bold imagination and came to life by the spirit from Eve. Just as a rainbow is made of many different colors, this mother is made of the essence from many different countries, races, cultures, and languages to make her whole and perfect. She awaits the birth of a star, Amrita, to guide her to a new era of joy, hope, and peace. <coughs> We don't have much time, I'm afraid, so we'll just take two or three questions maximum. Keep the questions short and the answers even shorter, <laughs> and uh, so we can move on to the next panel. Uh, questions? <coughs> questions from our panelists or comments? None? Okay, there's one over there. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. 